Multiple myeloma is a highly diverse disease, meaning that it is different in every patient. A small set of patients, about 15 to 20 percent, have what is known as high-risk multiple myeloma. High-risk myeloma refers to cases that are more likely to progress quickly or respond poorly to standard treatments. This can mean a worse prognosis for affected patients. High-risk myeloma is identified by a variety of patient and disease-based factors, including frailty and the presence of extramedullary disease, that is, the presence of myeloma outside of the bone marrow, or certain defects or variations in the chromosomes or genetic material in the myeloma cells. Myeloma that relapses earlier than expected based on these factors at diagnosis can also be considered high risk. Understanding your risk level is important when determining your care plan. Knowing your risk can help your doctor determine your prognosis and help them better select the right treatment for you. Testing for high-risk disease features should be done on bone marrow biopsy samples at the time of diagnosis and any time the disease relapses. To check for structural changes in the DNA of myeloma cells, specialists perform a process known as karyotyping using fluorescence in situ hybridization or FISH. FISH uses fluorescent probes that bind to specific DNA sequences to visualize the presence or absence of these sequences within the chromosomes of the myeloma cells. Karyotyping refers to the process of looking at these markers to characterize the size, shape, and number of chromosomes to check for abnormalities. A variety of changes to chromosomes can be seen using FISH and karyotyping, including translocations, in which DNA is located in the wrong place on the chromosome, deletions, in which part of the DNA is missing, gains, in which an extra copy of the DNA is present, or amplifications, where multiple extra copies of DNA are observed. Next generation sequencing of the DNA can also be done to provide a more detailed evaluation of these changes, as well as identify specific alterations in the sequences of certain genes. Some examples of high-risk DNA changes that may be identified using these tests include translocations between chromosomes 4 and 14, 14 and 16, or 14 and 20, a deletion of the short arm of chromosome 17, gain or amplification of the long arm of chromosome 1, or alterations to the TP53 gene sequence. The presence of one or more of these genetic abnormalities may increase the likelihood of a poor prognosis due to more rapid growth of myeloma cells and poor responses or shorter duration of response to standard treatment options. In the treatment of multiple myeloma, risk-adapted therapy aims to treat patients with the therapy that will work best for them while also decreasing the risk for side effects. Patients with standard risk myeloma, that is, those who do not have high-risk disease features or health factors, are treated with the best proven treatment to lead to the best possible response. Patients with high-risk disease, on the other hand, are usually given a more aggressive treatment that is designed to be more effective against their specific form of myeloma. This may involve a different combination of medications or a treatment given for a longer duration with a goal to achieve the deepest, most durable response possible. Proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies, and steroids, usually given as combination therapy, are the pillars of treatment for high-risk myeloma, especially when a patient is newly diagnosed. Clinical trials are also being done to evaluate the use of newer types of therapies, including CAR T-cell therapies and bispecific antibodies for patients with high-risk disease who have relapsed from previous therapies. Achieving a deep response is critical with high-risk myeloma, and doctors aim to achieve a complete response with minimal residual disease, or MRD, negativity. MRD refers to the small number of myeloma cells that often remain within the bone marrow after treatment, even when achieving a complete response. There are tests that can detect one myeloma cell in a million cells, 
and are used to determine the presence of MRD. MRD negativity is achieved when no myeloma cells are detected in the bone marrow, even using these very sensitive tests. Patients who achieve a complete response with MRD negativity generally have an improved prognosis, even with high-risk disease. Identifying patients with high-risk disease early, either at diagnosis or after relapse, is important because these individuals may not respond well to standard treatment options or may have a shorter duration of response to therapy. This can lead to poor outcomes. In these patients, the goal of therapy is to achieve the deepest response possible to minimize the risk for relapse. A personalized approach to treatment is often needed to achieve this in high-risk patients. In addition to the treatment options already available, clinical trials using new therapies and combinations are being done to better understand how to treat patients with high-risk disease. If you have high-risk myeloma, your doctor can help you identify any studies in your area that may be right for you and your specific form of disease.